It's groaning? I don't know. <laughs> yeah, all right, we'll see. It's, oh, oh yeah, wait, there's yeah, a Skype yeah, thing right. in there? Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, it's, okay. it's recording. All right, we're... Hello, Internet. I'm Tom, the artist and animator at Tiny Build, and I am here with... I'm Casper, I'm the designer of uh, Speedrunners. And what are we looking at? Uh, we're going to show off... Uh, this is our first video thing for Speedrunners. Woo! Yeah, it's really cool. Pretty late in. This is like update number 22. Yeah. First video. And it's the level editor for speedrunners. Yeah, so this is the new um, title screen that you that you have. If you right now it's only in in a, a private beta, so only a few people have access to it. But we'll open it up to more players uh, once the editor is more stable and uh, more feature complete. Um, so this is the new menu that you'll see, and you can see there's a nice little button here that says editor. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I already made a level called Tom School Level, which we won't look at. All right. I think we'll start a new level. Yeah. So there's a you can uh, cycle through levels that you made, but Tom has only made one uh, apparently really cool level. Um, or you can uh, create a new level uh, with the different type of themes that are in the game right now. Uh, so you have the university theme, the city theme, power plant, and uh, whatever. So what kind of uh, what kind of level do you want to uh, make? Scroll through them again. Ship university. Uh, university level. Alright, and I'll scroll. Oh, there we go. It's all not very user-friendly right now at the moment, but... It's yeah. user-friendly enough that we can put it out. Yeah, and that people can start... I mean, it's more important that people can start actually doing something than that it's user-friendly. So, um, yeah, this is the this is the awesome Speedrunners level editor. Zoom out so you can see the level. Okay, this is the level so uh, Yeah. Right now it's just a lap. Yeah, this is like the, if you make a new level, it loads by default like a really basic, simple, uh, small map uh, with uh, yeah, no, no objects really in it except for a start position uh, to spawn the player, which you can move around but you can't really delete it uh, because it's necessary. Because you have to spawn somewhere? Yeah, there's, the minimum requirement is that you have a start position. Um, so there's not, not much else in there. Uh, it's like a template that you can use to, to make a small map. So what's the first thing we do if we want to start making a speedrunner's level? Well, you can start uh, by building on this template. Let's do that. All right. Or you can just delete everything and... and okay, and so you made all the levels in speedrunners, so you're looking at this square now. Yeah. And how can I make this level more exciting? Yeah. Well, you tell me. Put oh, some slopes well, in it. Oh, yeah, okay. Something. Well, um, yeah, so this is a small map that uh, if you... You can, by the way, you can just run around in the editor if you want. Uh, it's uh, using the arrow keys and the jump and swing keys and everything you use yeah, in the game. Yeah, it's just the same uh, default controls. Except that uh, you have to control the camera with the uh, WASD. Um, so that makes it a bit, a bit difficult. But there's something you can do about that, which I'll talk about later. Uh, but if you run around this map, then you see that uh, you run around quite quickly. It's a small, small little area, uh, but that's good enough to for this uh, video to make something interesting. Alright, um, so let's put some slopes in there. Yeah. Alright, well uh, I've now, when you start the level editor by default um, you're in object editing mode. There are a couple different modes that you go into, tile editing, object editing, uh, graphics, AI volumes and checkpoints. These two are a bit... Uh, More complicated? Yeah, complicated I guess. Less um, intuitive. Like yeah. you can figure out what tiles are, you can figure out what objects are in graphics. AI volumes and checkpoints are more code-based things. Yeah, it's they're necessary to make the level function in speedrunners. Uh, but we'll do all the easy stuff first. Yeah, we'll start off with the tiles. Uh, you can click on tiles or you can press T uh, to go to tile editing mode. Um, and you can just draw, draw stuff, and then when you walk, you walk into stuff. So that's really cool. Uh, that works. Right. I mean, I'm pretty proud of that already. Okay. Um, there's a couple of things that you can do. Uh, you draw with the left mouse. You can control click to box select. Uh, you can move your box selection around. You can delete it. Or you can fill an area with your box select. And you can use the number keys like 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8 9 to change your brush size. So now I can draw more quickly if I want. Uh, and also if you hold Alt while clicking, 
it functions as the uh, eraser. So you can quickly erase large portions of tiles. Cool. Yeah. Um, okay, I like this so far. Yeah. So and then this there's like a uh, earthquake level. Whatever it is going on. <laughs> it's going all crazy. I like it. Um, and you can use the E and Q buttons to uh, cycle through the different uh, tiles. Uh, Go back to the first tile. So this is the first t uh, first one. Okay, that's just a black square. Yeah, What's it's the next one. Because uh, it's hard to see the difference. Yeah. Uh, so the next one is a wall. Wall jump wall. That yeah. You can slide up. Yeah. Uh, then the next one is a swing ceiling ceiling that you can swing on. Yeah. And it's the other wall jump wall. Yeah. And then you have this. That's decorative, right? Yeah. It's like. Uh, it's yeah, a wall decorative. You can see yeah. yeah. It's not really useful. Uh, and uh, then there's slopes. slopes. So there's, I can build my slope here. This is doing it like one tile at a time is messy. Yeah, messy and annoying. So that's why you can zoom out and change your brush size and just do a like huge slope. A, yeah, do like a whole slope here. It's so easy. It's always been that easy since day one. <laughs> yeah. So uh, what's oh, interesting geez, is that. Yeah. I'm, okay. So then I can use Alt click to. Like slowly try to delete these tiles, or I can. Go, oh, Jesus! No. Ah, the usability of this thing is so bad. Um, Don't say that. Or I can Love control, uh, like copy paste section, do like that. Oh, do you know what we can do? Uh, box select like this part and then just move it along, so that it will paste over all that stuff. Like. like oh, this. that didn't work. Oh, I can I can move it around, but I can also if I hold control, I can uh, copy this. This level's a mess. <laughs> yeah, <And> this is. <laughs> I can press delete and then I'll just delete all this section right here. Okay. Delete this and uh, start. maybe fill in this hole just because it's so messy. Oh right, just go like. Uh, take it and go like. Bam. Oh, right, okay. Go. Now this it's a good level. Is, yeah. Wow. There we go. This is. Okay. Let's. Let's start by doing some swinging okay. exercises here because swinging is really fun in speedrunners. Uh, I like swinging. I yeah, me too. You, but so, um, oh, and if you, because this is like, uh, this is messy. Um, yeah. Yeah. But what you can do is if you hold shift, uh, then it, it constrains your movement to like a single axis. So then it's more easy to uh, make tiles in a straight yeah. line. See, now I'm moving my mouse up and down, but the tiles are not moving up and down. So it's just like Photoshop. <laughs> it's That's why it's easy. Yeah, yeah, I guess. Um, so, like, uh, uh, this is me swinging around. And then you Woo! can start playing already. Yeah. Uh, oh, so if you want to playtest your thing and you don't want to move the camera around. camera around all the time, you can just press P. And you'll start play testing, play testing you'll from. Start play testing. Yeah, play testing. Yeah, it's the. Oh, if you press P, then it'll spawn at the mouse position. Yeah, so you Ooh. can. Uh, and if you, you spawn, spawn right in, in the middle of a wall. Yeah, that's not too bad. It will flip around a little oh, okay. bit, but okay. the game won't crash. Hopefully, um, if you press uh, play test here in the in the top right of your corner, then it will spawn at the uh, start position where, you, uh, where the start position is located. Okay, this level's pretty exciting. Yeah. So I'm gonna run around and do some. Oh, I'm terrible guy. Spoke too soon. Wee! Do some double jumping. All right, okay, that was fun. Pretty cool level. Yeah. I just, okay. Well, shall you know, we make the level better, or shall we move yeah, on to objects? I think. Uh, yeah, I think we'll have. To, we'll, okay. we'll, we'll make the level better by adding objects. Okay, good idea. So. Because you've got the top swing route now and the yeah. bottom slope route, I yeah. think the swing route is going to be faster. So at the bottom route, I think we should put more items. Right, like because a boost then or something. Yeah, because then there's a choice to either go low and get the boost, or go high and be faster because you're swinging. Yeah. All right. So we'll put a boost down here. If you place the boost, you can, or any other type of object, you can move it around. Uh, and if that object has any. Uh, specific properties you can right click on your object and then edit those properties so for instance this boost can be flipped and that's depending that on which way you're running around the track yeah the boost has like a, an indicator it's kind of pointing in a direction that yeah. tells the player okay this is where you have to go what's another object that's got more parameters um, 
So this is uh, an obstacle uh, spike. spike. This is a fall tile that when you run on it, it falls down. Uh, a gate and a trigger to open or close the gate. A lever that's attached to the trigger. A rocket launcher, a laser. Uh, this is a super boost thing, you know, the wind. The wind tunnels, tunnels yeah. that jet you along. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's about all the and objects that we Yeah. So, for instance, I can make a uh, gate. I'll put that. Where do we want? Where do we want to put the gate? Uh, we'll put it somewhere, and then we'll build a wall around it. All right. Well, I'll just I'll just put it here, and then if you right-click it, you see it has a couple of properties. It has a trigger ID to link it to a specific trigger. Right. Uh, it has a closed rotation and an open rotation. Uh, by default, like they're both zero. Um, the closed rotation is the rotation that it has when it's closed, and the open rotation. Change the closed rotation and see so if it changes. <laughs> Uh, let's hope it does. Oh, wow. yeah, okay, there you go. Right. okay, that explains what that does. Yeah, so by default it's closed, and the default uh, close rotation is 45. And if you open it, then you can rotate it to, let's say, uh, minus 45. Yeah, that makes sense. And then I'll give it a trigger ID uh, one. Okay. And then I have to place a trigger. I'll place that here. And this trigger ID is also one. And I can toggle the different modes, so it can uh, open the gate briefly, open it permanently, or close it permanently. Well, let's use that and see how that works. Uh, close it, or like, I'll, I'll open it. Zoom out, go back to speedrunner, have him open the gate. All right, uh, I'll just. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll put the gate. Yeah, there you yeah, go. Yeah, there we go. All right, and I can. You can scale this thing up, uh, like left and right, and uh, like this. So now we have a trigger here that says, I'll open the gate briefly, gate one. gate one, and this gate, if it's closed, it's pointing downwards, and if it's open, it's pointing upwards. So right now, if we're going to run through here, then the gate will probably go like this and open up. So well, then do it. Yeah, I'm going to start playtesting, and then swing all the way over there. <laughs> there yeah. it is. All right. Yeah, that was cool. So that's open now, um, and that's what the trigger does. And the gate, and you can also like attach a uh, switch, switch uh, like a lever or whatever. And you can place it anywhere you want. You can. There's no necessity for a lever to be there. Levers don't have any code on them. They're just yeah. graphics, you know. Yeah. So I can uh, also link it to this trigger by. Oh, okay. The same so they're just ID. to show people that gates are open and closing. Yeah. It's just uh, it's just a visual indicator. It doesn't I didn't know the game was doing that. Like, uh, okay, I've been playing levels so much, assuming that when you hit the graphic of a trigger, then it triggers the gate open. I didn't know there was just an invisible box around it. Yeah, there's like yeah, because at sometimes, for instance, in this, you're now standing in sort of like a corridor. Yeah. Um, if this thing was here, then, and if the trigger was only this big, then you could jump over it, but. You know, maybe in some oh, level okay. designs Sometimes. you don't want it to be able to jump over uh, it, so you just use it like that. And then but in a lot of them you can jump over them, right? Yeah. Huh. Okay, that's cool. Yeah. Okay, so that's what objects do. Yeah. Graphics, so, I bet, are pretty self-explanatory. Um, oh yeah, so maybe this is an interesting one, the, the boost oh, okay. uh, uh, thing. Let me just uh, set it again. There we go, press the wrong button. So the boost is... Uh, the the big wind uh, tunnel boost things and you can uh, place it, uh, scale it, whatnot. Okay, no, that you're placing boost lefts. Yeah, and you so can that's just gonna <laughs> blast him left. Yeah, it's gonna blast him left, and you can right click and then change its its type to like left up or up or right up or right or right down. down okay, etc. So let's say this boost is boosting the player right, and this one will boost the player left. Okay. Uh, that means that when we run into that's it, that's going to be really dumb. Just open that gate. That's bad. Yeah. And this is a bad level design. <laughs> it's good, right? I can move this around here and then make it a boost down. Uh, boost so down. Boost I'll down. boost down right. All right. So that he goes down the hole. Oh, oops. <laughs> Oh, there we go. Push right down. Yeah. Right so down. if I play test from here, and the gate opens, 
Start boosting. Bam! There we go. Cool, cool level. Yeah. <laughs> and now we're down here. What are we gonna do here? Uh, uh, I think we should play some graphics. Yeah, some graphics. So I pressed G for graphics. Okay, these are the artwork that exists in the university level set. Yeah. Uh, so we have uh, alley and library, those are right. the current levels that are in the university level set. And this is a set piece from the um, library, uh, library thing. There's like a section on the, whole, uh, on the left side of the map where right. uh, this graphical piece is used. Um, you can cycle through them with Q&E just like you cycle through okay. anything. Um, and in the okay. library there are huge set pieces. Yeah, we didn't know at this point that there was going to be a public level editor, <laughs> yeah. so we can place those, go back to those. Uh, yeah, we'll those places, some yes. of those. Alright, um, let me zoom in here. Right now it's interesting to point out this thing that says current layer. Right. Uh, you can cycle through the layers with uh, these brackets, and then it changes uh, uh, the, the layer that you're working on, either like a uh, parallax layer or a back. Oh, and it updates layer. on the left, it tells you which layer yeah, you Yeah, it shows you. Um, so there's the object layer that's in front of basically anything, and it's behind players. Okay. So if you want to put something in front of the level, then you can put it on the object layer. If you want to put it behind the level, you can put it in the middle object layer. Which I think is probably most suitable for a pillar. Okay. Uh, or a column. Um, so I'll just place it here, and then I can also right-click it to change all the properties. Um, I can change the rotation, I can flip it, uh, change the animation type. Uh, Alright, that's good. Make it rotate. I like that. Uh, clockwise, counterclockwise, uh, or good. use a sprite sheet. It, some graphics have a sprite sheet that are animated, this one doesn't. Uh, and you can also change the layer after you've placed it. Um, but this, this one's it's, it's quite a big. Uh, column, yeah. but you can scale it. You can scale it like only vertically or only horizontally, or you can also uniform scale it. You can scale all the graphics. Yeah. Fun. Yeah. So you can do basically anything you want uh, with the graphic. Let's see how much I have to scale this thing down to fit. Is this like a good sized pillar? Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. yeah. Use that. All right. Um, so I can I can start placing new pillars if I want, uh, and also scale those down. But I can also uh, box select this thing and use Control to uh, copy it. Oh wow! Well, okay. It if I want. Um, right now that I have these three, I can copy three. You at can a time. have the whole corridor full of pillars. Yeah. It's so easy. Yeah, it's it's easy as pie. Oh, boy. Uh, oh, these, okay. these pillars are still... Oh, I've scaled them up, like, uh, horizontally. Uh, or God. vertically, I think. That messes everything up. Alright. It's well, fine. We'll just pretend that that didn't... That, 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 that didn't happen. That go. Yeah. Um, so, let's move this over here a little bit. It's looking pretty good. Let's play test. And run around. Wow. In front of these pillars that are evenly spaced. This level plays cool, and now it looks cool. <laughs> Um, any other graphics that you want to place? Um, yeah, the graphic that's a giant gradient circle. I think uh, we should go back to place that graphic editing mode. Oh yeah, there was this yeah that this uh, like sunlight thing. Put it in between the pillars. All right, I'll just fix it here for a second. In between the pillars. Okay, that's good. Yeah. Yep. All right. I can also play, because right now it's on the middle object layer. Okay. I can also put it on one of the parallax scrolling layers. Ah. Like this one, for instance, the, the, the smaller this number is, the more it the scrolls. The further back yeah. the parallax is. Yeah, so now when you see, if I move the camera around, you, you should can make see the number the, a little bit higher. Yeah, probably. Have it more like. Yeah, okay. Right. So now oh, it's well. behind this pillar right here yeah. somewhat. But if you move the camera around, it moves along with you a little bit. Is this a bad example? I feel like it's a bad we example. We could pick a different thing if you like. Yeah. All right. Let me just see if I can. That's good. Use that one. All right. We'll just place no, this thing. Oh, okay. Right. All right. I can right-click, delete, ah. and it's gone. Okay. But I'll let's say I place this thing here. 
Okay. And I'm going to put it in. Yeah, that's a good. Oh, that's a good position for it, right? Put it on a parallax layer. Yeah, I'll put it on like a huge. Okay. All right. So now when you move around, you can see it's that really it's, far in the background. Yeah. If I play test from here, you can also. See. Oh. Uh, yeah, we made the boost there. <laughs> Wait, let me just remove those boost things with right click, delete. Uh, and play test from here again. See if I work around here. This level is great. The thing looks like it's more in the background because yeah. it's scrolling around a little bit. And you can put things on all sorts of multiple parallax layers. Yeah. And then your level will look really cool. Yeah, you can have like. Uh, six columns in a row, all on different layers. So when you well, and then it'll look like they're placed diagonally in the room. Yeah, which is pretty cool. Um, but yeah, I think the graphic, the graphic editing thing, it's really good. <laughs> it might need some work. So we're curious to hear about feedback on, on like improving the workflow on these things and if, if they yeah, need to be better. I'll put them in front of everything. There we go. Some nice curtains. Yeah, nice. Alright. Okay, so this is a fancy level. Yeah. It's looking good so far. Um, so we, we did AI play testing. We did next tiles. or checkpoints next? Oh, there's, there's one thing about tiles that I might want to explain because okay. tiles also have layers. And right oh, now okay. we're working on the collision layer, which is all these black. Right. Uh, tiles, but you can also place uh, tiles on different layers, uh, like the shading layer or background layers. Oh, yeah. So the background is, for instance, let me just cycle through this to get a nice. Uh, you can just draw like this, or maybe increase your color size. Oh, it's just a huge color. Yeah, this is just a huge uh, okay. color. This is like That's a uh, background. This is not uh, parallax scrolling, it's just a nice little background that you can use. It looks like this section is inside. Yeah, exactly. Cool. So this gives like a, an indication of why there's a huge platform here floating in the air. It's because this is actually it's a building. Of like a building or whatever. Yeah. Huh, okay. With nice curtains. Oh, the curtains are covering the white ceiling. Yeah, that's maybe not a good idea, right? I can move it around a little bit. Move it up more. There you there go. We go. Okay. This is looking awesome. Yeah. All this right. is my favorite level so far. Yeah. <laughs> um, so that's tiles, objects, graphics. So we look at AI volumes? Uh, I know that AI volumes are super optional because some, like, if people are playing levels, they're probably going to play it against other people. But I know that checkpoints are something you definitely need in every level. Yeah. That's true. Uh, so, what Tom is saying, the, the AI volumes, they're used for uh, bots, or used by bots, uh, to tell the bots actually what to, what to do in the map, because otherwise they just keep running in a certain direction. Um, but we're letting players decide for themselves whether or not they want to add AI volumes or not. If you do add them, uh, then the map that you've made will support bots, and you can play against the computer on these maps. If you don't add AI volumes, you can still play the map, but you just can't play it against bots. So, how do bots work in speedrunners? What's an AI volume? Yeah, alright, so if I switch to AI volume mode, I press V or I can click, click here, um, you can draw volumes. And this is a volume that says left, and that tells the, a bot whenever he uh, encounters this volume, the bot will start running to the left. Well, that's bad because that's the start of the level. So yeah, this is right. yeah. So this should be a uh, volume that says right. Uh, I can click on it and then change the type uh, to right. Or if I'm uh, if I don't want to place a left one, I can sort of scroll through these things with uh, Q and E. And, okay. Uh, start drawing. Uh, and then we right. want us to jump and swing at this section. Yeah. So, so here we want them to jump. So we switch. I pressed E and then I want to uh, jump and I can draw a jump volume here. And then, let's say here, we want him to uh, grapple and swing around a little bit. And then he's going to jump, 
start grappling, hold the grappling hook, swing, 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 and he's going to release the grappling hook here when he leaves this volume. Can you get him to double jump? Yeah. And then here we're going to want him to jump, double jump. Uh, let's say when he enters here, he's going to jump, and then maybe swing a bit some more. It's difficult. We've made a difficult section here. No, you just move the jump further along. Oh yeah, I can move this more yeah, here. Yeah, that'll work. Yeah, scale this up a little bit. Maybe it'll work. Okay. We'll see. All right. Well, we can test it. Yeah. To see, or like it says here, press B to spawn a bot, uh, and it will spawn right at my mouse cursor. So I'm gonna spawn him inside this volume so that he actually knows that he has to run to the right. And then we'll see what he does. Hey, there's Unic. Right on, okay. Jumping. Oh, oh, he I made, made it. it. Okay. All right, and he's opened oh, this, cool. this thing up, and oh, uh, and then he keeps running to yeah. the right. Yeah. Okay. So he doesn't know anything. In the bot is just he's just pure going on whatever all these volumes tell him to do. When he hits the square, he does what the square says. Yeah. So right now, when he went down, he should be going left from here. So I can place a square. It says go to the left. I'm gonna start running to the left. Do you know what I just realized? This is the Seven first time. This is the first time. <laughs> That's funny, you can place them. Yeah. So oh, right now, yeah, so he, this is something I'll explain. Uh, did you want to say something? Uh, this is the first time we've said this character's name out loud. Oh, really? Uni. <laughs> no, Unic. <laughs> <laughs> it's not Uni, it's Unic. Yeah. The uh, font's weird. So anyway, what, what was you going to yeah. say about AI? Okay, so Unique? here, when, they, when a bot encounters a wall jumping section, mm -hmm. That's where uh, he can control some things by himself. He will automatically uh, slide up walls. Oh, well, if you put a jump volume here, he'll jump and then slide up walls. And okay. when he reaches a certain threshold, uh, he'll automatically jump away from it. And his, also his like, direction that he wants to go okay. will change. At the peak of his wall slide, yeah. he'll jump across. Yeah, that's like an automatic thing that he does. So you yeah. don't have to uh, place like a jump volume or whatever here. Uh. He'll automatically do that when he's uh, on a wall. Okay, can you place a jump volume so that he'll double jump up yes. there? Yes. Because that feels so good. Okay. So, Aha. this is like a section where... Oh, now he's going to keep going around the level. Yep. Cool. Uh, uh, he messes mind. this thing up. Yeah. I was worried about this. So, let's say this is not going correctly. Okay. How do we solve this? Uh, you can make this jump volume a little bit bigger uh, so that he'll jump higher. Oh, okay. I can do that. Cause the bigger the volume is, the longer he is in this, inside this volume, and okay. the longer he uh, will basically... This volume just tells him uh, press the A button or press yeah. the jump button. So it's like when you're playing speedrunners, if you hold the A button for much longer, then you'll jump higher. Yeah, So exactly. if he's within the volume for longer, then he'll be holding the A button for longer. And yeah. Um, so I've made this volume bigger, that he'll jump further. And then I've placed the grappling volume a little bit further along so that he does a big okay. jump, and then goes into this grappling section, and then. Can you press in. B and spawn another bot? Yeah. Okay. It'll be the same uh, bot. You can't spawn a million bots. No, it's just okay. a one because you only need one to test yeah. test all the stuff out. Uh, all right, and if cool. I press P, I can also run race along with him. Yeah, I can try to race him. The AI volumes don't affect you because you're a player. Oh, he misses this thing. All right, so this is interesting as well because he missed, uh, he missed this jump here. Okay. And then because we didn't put any volume uh, telling him where to go, he just ran to the right. So it's a good uh, idea to whenever there's a, an opportunity for the bot to maybe miss something uh, around these wall areas to also put like a uh, an extra volume that just tells him, hey, if you miss this wall here. And just try keep again. going to the yeah. left. Yeah, try again. Okay. Oh, there he is. That was pretty fast. Yeah, so now he missed it and he's trying again. And he missed it again. Let's move this, yeah. let's uh, scale this one. Uh, okay. Yeah. And now he's using the double jump. Alright, good. Cool. Yeah. I thought AI volumes would be harder than that. Yeah, it's not that difficult, but okay. it's it can be a bit difficult to get it like perfectly right because okay. for instance if he's, he's, going, he's going up here and when he gets to this area you can see him swinging against the ceiling yeah. up here so and that just it looks a bit weird so yeah. you might especially these grappling volumes you might want to 
rescale those a little bit, resize it to make it. I'm look gonna like say perfect. it looks a bit weird. We can't publish this as an official level, but if you're making levels and it's your first level, who cares if he hits the ceiling? Yeah, no, just that's make, true. Just make that's fun true. levels. Yeah, that's. that's if you want to make the most official best speedrunners yeah. level, then this is the guy. You're watching the right yeah. video. Um, oh, so an interesting thing is when you uh, start placing uh, objects, you can place the uh, these uh, obstacles. Uh, obstacles uh, automatically spawn a uh, volume, uh, a jump volume around them. Oh, uh, okay. So, so the bots avoid obstacles. Yeah. Oh. oh. Yeah, we've had this volume here, so I'll just move this around. Uh, or delete it. Delete it. And then you'll see that I just placed this obstacle here, I didn't put this jump volume here, the game did that automatically. Uh, but now when uh, Unic rule... <laughs> Where is he gone? More of them here. Oh, there he is. All right. See, okay. he jumped over that one as well because cool. the because the volume. Does it do that there. for spikes as well? Uh, for spikes, no. Ah. Uh, because that's a good question. Because spikes are, you can place spikes in all kinds of weird uh, situations, like yeah. on the walls and whatnot, and um, so that's um, the best thing to do with spikes is to uh, put a bunch of spikes and then manually place a jump volume. Okay. Okay. Yeah. That's AI volume. The last yeah. thing for the level, for any speedrunner's level that you're going to make, is checkpoints. Yeah. <laughs> Good unit. Uh, um, all right. So up. checkpoints. So the, the 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 one thing that that's absolutely necessary in speedrunners is uh, it's a um, it's a race where at any time someone can win or lose. Someone can fall off screen and die. Yeah. So, the game needs to know... Who's in the lead. Yeah. And that's, uh, that's quite difficult to... Things are getting emotional here. Yeah. <laughs> 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 this is a very delicate subject for me. Yeah. Um, I've spent so much time working on it. Um, so... The game needs to know who's in the lead. Yeah. And in order to tell the game how to know who is in the lead, you have to place checkpoints. And you can press C to toggle checkpoint mode or click here, checkpoints. And then you see that this empty map already has a couple of checkpoints uh, oh, good, okay. placed in it. Uh, checkpoint 0, which is near the start. Uh, checkpoint 1, checkpoint 2, and checkpoint 3. three. Uh, these are all linked together uh, this, using this yellow line. And now, these numbers on these checkpoints uh, don't mean anything, it's just like the name of a checkpoint. Oh, okay. Just like the number on the trigger is okay. just a number. Um, it's just used to identify a checkpoint. So but you can change it to whatever name you want Yeah. it still work. Yeah. So there's no real uh, order based on those numbers. The, the order of the checkpoints is totally is only based on these uh, yellow lines connecting these checkpoints. Okay. So if I right click this checkpoint, I can see it has a weight and a next ID. Oh, okay. Uh, we're going to ignore the weight for now. Uh, we might remove it from the level editor, I'm not sure. Um, the most important thing is that uh, this next ID says number two, which means that this checkpoint, uh, uh, the, the next checkpoint to go from this checkpoint is uh, checkpoint two. From checkpoint two, the next checkpoint to go to is three. And from three, it's back to zero. It says here. Okay, so if you can name them whichever one if you can name them whatever you want, then how do I know which checkpoint is checkpoint ID 2? Um, well, you don't really, you just have to find it yourself. Oh, I see, whichever one the yellow line is pointing to? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, right now, when this map is still pretty rectangular, so yeah. th these checkpoints are more or less correct. When we start here, if I start playing against the bot, right. then the last checkpoint that we've passed is checkpoint zero, right. and the next checkpoint that we're going to is checkpoint one. Um, so this yellow line is basically the the line that can be used to determine who is in the lead. It's oh whoever's whoever, further along yeah, this whoever's line. Yeah, whoever's furthest along that line. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah, and then when we're past this checkpoint, it'll check to see who who's in the lead by using this line. Uh, okay. To see who's further along this line. Okay, that makes sense. So, can you add a checkpoint in the middle of 
zero and one? Uh, yeah, so let's say in this, in this level it's not really all that necessary, but maybe okay. if there's, um, for instance, if you could also jump on top here yeah. and, and start running around here, yeah. uh, then it might be interesting to have like a different route going up here and then down yeah. there. So what you can do is you can place a new checkpoint by pressing the left mouse button. Let's say I'll, I'll place a checkpoint here and a checkpoint here. And then you can start connecting checkpoints using uh, by holding Alt and drawing a line from one checkpoint to another. So from checkpoint 0 to checkpoint 4 I'm holding Alt and releasing it here. And now there's a line drawn from 0 to 4. And I can dr also draw one from 4 to 5. And then from 5 the next checkpoint is number 1. Okay. Huh, okay, that's really yeah. easy. So now there's like a little uh, graph in the game. Uh, we'll try to find uh, the nearest line for any player. So if, for instance, I'm on top... Where am I? Oh, this is... Uh, okay, this is going to be annoying. I'm not going to do this. Uh, say this character is on top here. Then the line that he checks against is the line that he's closest to, which is this line. And Eunuch is now running around, around on the floor here, so he's going to be checked against this line. Okay. But for now, that doesn't really matter all that much because in the end they'll both end up at checkpoint one. Okay. But say if we had like very diverging graphs. Yeah, if you uh, had going multiple on, paths all over the levels, yeah, and, and you need to checkpoint it up. Yeah, and if you had shortcuts and, and whatever, then, uh, then that's really uh, necessary. Okay. You can uh, check the validity of your checkpoint system by pressing C, and that'll spawn a big grey uh, box. Uh, with a gradient that tells you um, something. I'll show you. Uh, so I pressed C, and now this this huge. Uh, I don't know what this is. Yeah. <coughs> this basically. Um, <coughs> shoot. Thank you. Tells you. I'm gonna see if I can delete this thing. So. It tells you uh, which point in this map is further along than other points, and it's all on a gradient. So anything that's white is far along in the map, and anything that's dark grey or even black is uh, not far along in the map. So okay. if there were two characters, and one of them is standing around here, and the other one is standing around here... Okay, then the right guy... side is a lighter section, so he'd win? Yeah. Okay, so that's how you can judge who should win in the level? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. That kind of makes sense. And if I zoom all the way out and I place it, then you can see it looks a bit shitty. Right. Um, but that's because of other factors. But here you can see that this it's is like... It's still that if you're in the dark grey section and yeah. someone else is in a lighter section, then yeah. they'll win. And, and you can see the gradient going from dark grey all the way okay. to lighter grey. So to it's useful to yeah. check like right. if someone's on the top route and someone's on the bottom route, in our top yeah. section where we split routes. Yeah, and you can see like, you okay, see if you're, who's gonna win. if this guy's standing here, then he's in this uh, dark section, and the other person is standing in this section, and this section is like a little bit uh, lighter. Can then you press C now and it'll just do this? Again? Yeah. Okay, yeah, then we can see the person on the bottom, I think, would win. Yeah. I think. Yeah, and that makes, makes a bit sense, because they're both eventually aiming to go to this checkpoint. Yeah. But uh, from the person who is standing over here, it's just a straight line to this checkpoint. It's okay, just like a sense. straight uh, horizontal line, which is like the, 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 the closest, that makes sense. the fastest way to I go. I saw you working on this and I didn't have any clue what it was. <laughs> now that kind of makes yeah, sense. Yeah, but for this guy, it's not a straight line because he has to go through this checkpoint and, and then, then down, down, down then down. So this is a, like a, a bit longer route to go uh, than the bottom section. Huh. So if we want to give this guy a little bit of an advantage, uh, then what we could also do is move this thing up here, and then, you know, it's, uh, it's all even out. So yeah. Alright, this is cool. I think that's everything done in the level now. Oh wait, r race the bot around. Sorry? Start running against Unic now. Uh, oh yeah, just like wait, play when he gets Yeah, when he gets to the start, you have to race around the track once. Yeah, alright. I'll just uh, 
I'll just wait for him. So the camera that's operating right now is the default camera that's also used in game, okay. uh, except it doesn't trigger anything when you're uh, out of the map. Okay, so can anyone lose in this mode? No. Okay, this is just a test? Yeah, so if I outrun Unic here, right. uh, then I'll just go off the screen. Yeah, I forgot about Spike. <laughs> yeah, I almost did as well. Okay, this feels like a speedrunner's level. Yeah, but whenever I run off screen, I just run off screen and there's nothing triggered. Okay. So now it's time I'm to still save running the to level. the left. Yeah. yeah. So now it's time to actually... I'll just wait for him. Oh, actually, I just, that's, yeah, that was yeah. really good. However, I mean, in I can just run through them. Oh. Yeah. Because <laughs> this is a Sorry. test mode? Yeah, because it's a test mode. You should not want to die that. in test mode. Okay. I think. Okay, so how do we publish it as a finished right, level? I'll just, right now, if you want to go out of playtesting mode, because this is annoying you, you just press any of these uh, keys right here, like okay. the tile mode or whatever, and it just uh, stops and you can move the camera around with the okay. PSD again. So if you want to save it, uh, I suggest first naming your level. Something that's not untitled? Yeah, you can just click there and then... Uh, Casper's cool level? Yeah. Casper's... <laughs> oh wait, that's not how you spell it's cool. cool. Yeah, that's what's cool. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's how we spell cool, right? Uh, yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, I'm just gonna delete this section. Over here. <laughs> you don't, you don't want people to think it's a bad level. Yeah, I know. Well, this is a bad level design, anyways, because in speedrunners, well, in speedrunners, I don't know if you noticed, know but there's never really a wall like this that just stops you, because this is not what you want to have in the game. Where well, just, maybe, uh, maybe in the levels that you design. But yeah, <laughs> we'll see how many of these top walls there are. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Maybe you'll change your mind. Yeah. Um, okay, so we're gonna, yeah. we're if, I, if I were to make this level, then okay. yes, yeah, I'm super annoyed by this. All right. So I'm just going to put this here and then you know, I'll fill this up. Oh. So, and, yeah, now it's a good level because now there's no <laughs> stopping. You just can you can keep going. Ah, that's yeah. a secret. It's a good speed runners level. Yeah. It's All fluid right. momentum. Yes. And then saving this thing is as easy as pressing 